Let me emphasize that what I'm about to share with you is tremendously sensitive both to me personally and the Army. You're aware that we've got an infantry weapons development program. Well, in WW2, they initiated a sub-program for biotech force enhancement. Yeah, super soldier. Yes. An oversimplification, but yes. And I dusted it off. Got him doing serious work again, bold work. Across the hall, they're trying to arm you better. They were trying to make you better. In all the obvious ways. And some not so obvious. Banner. Banner's work was very early phase. It wasn't even weapons application. He thought they could strengthen cellular resistance to radiation. We thought it could give our boys built-in insulation against some of that depleted uranium no one likes talking about. It was promising. But politicians don't give a flying F about what real soldiers need. They like big twin rotor heliplanes that don't work, that they can build in their state while perfectly good machinery rots under their nose. So our money was running out. Banner was so sure of what he was onto that he tested it on himself. I let him. It was supposed to be very low exposure. And something went very wrong. Or it went very right. I still don't know. So why do you run? Banner was brilliant, one in a generation, but there are people who grasp that peace and freedom derive from power. And people who don't. He doesn't. He's a scientist. He is not one of us. So it'd be good to nail them then. Why don't you just take the data to someone else? Because he is the data. He skipped before I could get him on a table and get it out of him. As far as I'm concerned, that man's whole body is property of the U.S. Army. You said he wasn't working on weapons, right? No. But you were, you were, weren't you? You were trying other things. One serum we developed was very promising. But it didn't pan out. Or it did, but it was unstable. It made subjects unstable. We were refining it. But then... Al-Hakid happened, all those pictures at the hearings, Congress lost its nerve, and they killed it. What a real contempt for people like that. You and me both, Captain, you and me both. Blonsky, how old are you, 45? 39. You know, when I came back from Vietnam, I was 27. I looked 45. So you're beating the curve. It takes a toll, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So get out of the trenches. You should be a colonel by now with your record. Nah, I'm a fighter. I'll be one for as long as I can. You know, if I could take what I know now, put it in the body I had 10 years ago, that would be someone I wouldn't want to fight. I could probably arrange something like that. They said they killed it. They killed the program. She kept some of it, didn't she? Did you ever hear about saving something for a rainy day? Well, I think it's raining. <laughs>